my name is Kathy Blumig, and I'm a beekeeper at Walgast Tree Farm in Apiary. Most people, when they think of honeybees, they think of honey. I think it's important for us to know what insect we're talking about. There's always a lot of confusion about what a honeybee is. So I like to start off. Is this a honeybee nest? No, <laughs> it's not. This is a nest of a bald-faced hornet. They're uh, also pollinators, believe it or not, but there's no honey in there, but it is a beautiful, beautiful nest made of paper that they make, and it only lasts for one year, um, but honeybees don't live in there. Typically, honeybees are kept by people in a hive such as this. So, this is called the hive body, or deep, and inside the deep, they also call it supers, are frames. This doesn't have any wax drawn out on them, but it kind of reminds me of a filing cabinet. So bees will live in a structure like this. Bees like to live in enclosed cavities, not out in the open, but this is a beehive. This. There's usually separate boxes where the bees will put the honey as opposed to where they raise their brood like this. And people ask me, well, how do you get the honey from the box? So one way that I like to do it is with, this is called a triangle board. So basically if I had honey that I was ready to take off, what I would do is take this board, put it beneath the honey boxes that I want to take off, or supers they're called. And then what happens is there's a little hole here. The bees go through the hole and they come out there but they can't figure out how to get back in. It takes, after two days though, they figure it out. So you can't really wait <laughs> wait around too much. But that's just a, that's how I like it. There's always a few bees left in there, but it's, it's not too bad. And I think it's pretty much a non-stressful way to get the honey off of the hive there. How do I know when honey is ready to take off? You see, it's capped. This. So this is a frame of honey. There's no brood in here at all. And you'll see it's got wax cappings on it. And so in order to get it so that it'll come out in the extractor, we're gonna uncap. You have to take the cap, wax cappings off. So this is an uncapping tank. And this is a really neat uncapping tool that I started using last year. It's got these little teeth spines on it. And you just pull this down and uncap. Oops, get that off. Virtually one side almost. Spin this around. We're gonna get the other side. Sometimes we have this is an uncapping fork for little bits. So we're going to take this and we're going to hopefully not get honey all over the place and put it in the extractor. Okay, now this um, extractor, there's two ways that you can extract frames from this particular extractor. It, it can do radial extractions, like we have uh, like on the spokes of a bicycle wheel, or you can do tangential. And we're gonna start with tangen tangential um, to let you get a sense of how the honey comes out of the frames. So we start slow. And very soon, yep, here it starts, you'll see it hitting the sides. 
Now those frames of honey were a slightly different weight. So you get like a slightly unbalanced, uh, like a washing machine. But here, let's show you, let's see what it, this is when we use tangential. Okay, so obviously there's still more honey to come out. But you can see a lot has come out so far. And here's the other side that we have to do yet. So we can, I guess what I do, I'll do is even, eventually I'll put them back in radially. But let's, so we're gonna turn it around. I, it's really important that I pay attention to what direction the frame is facing. If you were to look really closely at these different cells, you'll notice that they're on an angle. And that's so that the bees, when they put the nectar in there to turn it into honey, it doesn't fall out. So if I were to put it in like this, it wouldn't come out because basically I would be through centrifugal force, putting more and more hunt, you know, stuffing it into the cells. So we're gonna turn it this way. If that makes sense. Yeah, here it goes. And that's a 400 micron strainer. So it's gonna take out the bigger pieces of beeswax. Now how bees make honey? They visit flowers. Bees have to visit anywhere from 300 to 6,000 flowers. I'm gonna double check that. And that they have to make up to 10 trips an individual honeybee in a day. When honeybees get the nectar, it goes into something called a honey sac, which is completely separate from their digestive system and they start to add their enzymes to it and it starts the process for changing it into honey. When a forager fills up her honey sack, she flies back and there's another worker bee there like, okay, give it to me, you know, I want, give me the nectar. So she will transfer that nectar from her honey sack to uh, another worker bee and she adds it to her honey sack and then she adds her enzymes to it. And then she finds one of her 40,000 or so sisters and adds it to, gives it to another one. And she does the same thing. And eventually they will take it and then they put it in the cells. Now, nectar, depending upon which flower, can be like anywhere from 6% to 60% water. Honeybees need to draw that moisture off so that it doesn't ferment. So they'll actually start to fan their wings over the frames to draw moisture off until eventually it gets to be about 18% and then they cap it. This is our other honeys that we have. Uh, my husband plants a crop that produces this honey. It's the buckwheat. It's a very um, assertively flavored, molasses-like. Um, some people have used the word bourbon, smoke, and it's really nice on brie cheese or in yogurt uh, as a base in a barbecue sauce. And then this is just talking about our honeys. So this is a fall. So fall is honey that's made, and it's actually, they're starting to make it now, is when the bees are nectaring on different species of goldenrods, different species of asters. Um, there's some joe pie weed in there. There's a little bit of clover and it's a fuller body, fruitier honey, and the spring is lighter, not only in color, but in taste. It's a lot more floral. So um, that's, you know, that's some of the background about the honeys that you can find in New Jersey. Um, nationally, there's over 300 types of honey produced in North America. Here's five, <laughs> okay? So it's a great way to go in and experience a place is if you can buy some local honey there. Honeybees are so important to people. Um, we are linked inexorably uh, and principally because honeybees are the engine that drives agriculture. They uh, help the farmer produce more and better quality fruit. They help the farmer make the best use of their water resources, fertilizer, 
whatever they're using in their production, they help bring it forward. If you don't have this pollination that honeybees provide, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And in some areas, they actually have to hand pollinate. So can you imagine, <laughs> you know, the work that goes involved? This is, I believe, in a plum orchard. I'm not sh positive of that, but um, she's got some pollen in a cup and she's taking the end of a cigarette and just dipping it in there and putting it on each of those flowers. That is a lot of work. It, they don't do as complete of a job as honeybees do. So honeybees in agriculture are very, very important. And they are, they're the engine that drives it.